This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 480 of the Stable Scoop Show. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our sponsors this week are horselovers.com and you, our auditors. This week, the tables are turned on me as our production coordinator, Jemmy, interviews me about the future of Stable Scoop, the Horse Radio Network, and our new show called Finding Florida. Listen in. This is Glenn Geek. And this is Jemmy Lagania, and you're listening to The Stable Scoop Show on the Horse Radio Network. And I am here taking over Stable Scoop, and I'm so happy, I'm so excited, and I'm so honored, because I'm going to be explaining everything that is going on with... St- I'm not going to be explaining, Glenn. I'm be explaining. I'm just interviewing and asking him the questions. But everything is going on with Stable Scoop and Horse Radio Network and our new show. So Stable Scoop was the first show on Horse Radio Network. It was started back in August 2008, essentially the flagship show of HRN. But with Helena just leaving... Glenn, what is the plan for the show? Well, thank you for, for joining me today and for turning the tables on me. It's like an invasion here. Uh, <laughs> and real quick, for those that don't know, Jemmy is also brand new to the Horse Radio Network. Uh, she's helping Jennifer a lot with production and, and many more things. We've just dumped everything on her, basically. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for being here for us and helping us out. And with our new show, I feel like Jen's dumping you on me. So that's good. <laughs> We'll explain that in just a minute. (laughs) That's probably pretty much more true than not. So, (laughs) and you're going to regret it. So Stable Scoop was the first show, and Helena left about two months ago. And and we we keep telling the audience that we are revamping the show. We're going to do something completely new and different with it. And it just, Irma set us back. Irma Mm -hmm. really did set us back about a month. Uh, We had a week of preparing for Irma, trying to get shows done, and then, uh, you know, losing our pa- power and internet for like nine days. Scrambling the studio down here. <laughs> yes, I went down to there where Jemmy lives, and she helped us get some shows out that following week. It just really messed us up. And I know you and I have had this conversation about how Irma really changed the karma of this state for about a month. It really, it really messed did. with things. I know it messed with your production, too, of oh your podcast. Oh, my podcasts. gosh. One of my podcasts still hasn't technically recovered from it. <laughs> And, and for my other, I caused a a major um, come to Jesus moment with my other podcast, yeah. and it caused us to kick off this other podcast. So it literally, Irma has turned my podcasting life completely upside down. So yeah, it's just been it was one of those things. It, it was one of those things, and it wasn't something that any of us predicted. But we've been putting to get shows together here for Stable Scoop, but we do have a new plan that's going to start in 2018. And I'd like to tell everybody about it. I'm excited to hear it too. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to, I'm going to, until 2018, I'm going to put out some episodes where I just interview people I think are interesting. And then starting in 2018, every episode will have three parts. It's going to start with a horsey rest of the story. And I don't know if you listened to the way I heard it with Mike Rowe. It, mm. Or you're familiar with the rest of the story with Paul Harvey. Oh, where they kind of tell you the story, but you don't, they don't tell you who the main character is until the end. So you're kind of guessing the whole way along who the main character is. Well, we have professional writers that we've hired and, and I'm starting to see the stories come in and they are unbelievable. So we're going to tell horsey rest of the stories. Oh, I love it. Yep. And it's going to be like, or the way I heard it with Mike Rowe, where we're going to tell you the end. And then all the way through, you kind of have to guess who who the horse is or who the rider is. So is someone like famous and known in the horse community or? Now or in way back history. It could be way back history or could be now. But the way the stories are told kind of leaves you guessing until the very end. Or there's a twist that you didn't know about. Are these true stories yes. or are these fictional true stories, stories, like fan these fiction are about? true stories. <laughs> gotcha. And, and, and the writers we've hired are terrific. We'll introduce them at some point here, but they are terrific. And the stories are, I can't wait to do these for you. Mm. So that's going to start every episode of Stable Scoop. That's not been done before. So that's nice. That's fun. And who's reading them? Who's I'm going to read them. I'm going to do You're going to read that. all of them. Yep. Okay. Yep, we're going to do one a week. And then we're going to do a product review like we've always done on Stable Scoop. And then 
we're going to do once a month segments. So the end of each episode each week will be different. And we're going to do once a month segments, including Adventures with Devin Horn. You all met Devin here a couple weeks ago. She is the wild and crazy girl who does a lot of adventurous uh, daredevil things. And she's going to come on every month to tell us what daredevil things she's done over the last month. And she's so much fun to listen to. Uh, of course, she rode the Mongol Derby, all thousand kilometers. She is a hundred mile racer, like on feet. She is also an endurance rider, hundred mile endurance rider. She has done. Uh, she just got off the trail from doing five hundred miles of the Colorado Trail on horseback. So she has story. She's also get this. She's a roller derby girl. She's she's totally boring. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a total snooze fest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's a roller. I have never seen roller derby in person, but I would go watch Devin kick ass. I would, wow. I'd watch her do that. I've been to one d- roller derby competition, and they're exciting. So if uh, you go, I'm there. <laughs> you didn't didn't make you want to put put on skates and go beat up um, people. No, it made me want to put on <laughs> pads and shields, hide in a corner <laughs> from all the crazy ladies who are like beasts out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah Jemmy's like five foot two and three quarters, so she'd probably end up under the rail. <laughs> you don't have size advantage, that's for sure. Well, and then, so that's one of the things we're going to do every month. Mary Kitzmiller is going to come on and do movie reviews for us, and that's current movies out. She loves movies. She lives for movies. She knows every actor in every movie. She knows all about the movies. She's also going to do kind of like a new movie review every month and also review an old horsey movie. So oh, fun. Yeah. So when um My Little Pony 2 comes out, Jamie Jennings will be spared. <laughs> That's right. Mary can do it. Lucas. I think we're going to get a different <laughs> review from Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Auditor Game Show. We're going to do that once a month where we have the auditors on doing a game show and winning prizes. So that's going to be fun. And then also an Auditor Roundtable where we bring uh, three auditors on and we throw a subject out there and we just let them go. We let them talk about it for 20 minutes. So we have a whole new show planned for you. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's taken us a little time to get all the pieces together and that's why it's not starting until 2018. But in the meantime, I think you'll enjoy some of the interviews that I have lined up and some of the things that we have planned. So, you know, as a listener and fan of podcasts, that can be one of like the scariest things of, a, of, you know, being a fan of a show is what's going on with the transition? Where's this going? Is this going away? And it's very fearful. But it's nice to hear that you've really taken the time to not just, you know, throw something together and stitch it and throw out some crappy content. You're really trying to be mindful of what your listeners want. And it sounds like you've created a good plan. So kudos to you. Well, and kudos to the auditors who really helped us put this together. It's they're they're part of, they ha- all had input into what's going into the new show. So kudos to them as well. You know, now we're about to get into the future of Horse Radio Network, but I want to ask you one quick question about the the history of Horse Radio Network, okay. if I may. Yeah. So as you reflect, I mean, you guys have just had your your ninth anniversary, you just had seven years at at Hit'em. So as you reflect back on this time, like, how do you feel like you've really impacted, ha- impacted the world of the horse lovers, the community of the horse world? You know, we get so many emails. We You don't in the beginning when you start a podcast, and Jemmy can attest to this, you don't get a whole lot of reaction when you first start a podcast. But then that grows yeah. and grows and grows. And now that we've been doing it for so long, we get a lot of emails. And they are so, you know, I had a comment yesterday, and, and maybe I can, maybe this is just a good way to explain it. And and you had one, too. And, and you don't have to say who it was, but um, you had one that was very relevant here mm. So I had this comment on our post about our birthday yesterday for Horses in the Morning. And um, this listener, who was also an auditor, said, Thanks for everything. I know this may sound dramatic, but it changed my life. It has been my connection to the equine world before I, I bought my horse. It made everything so accessible to me and made me feel like I could really do this horse ownership thing. It also brings some of the most amazing aspects of the equine world to my front door. I'm never far away from the action, and all I have to do is turn on my HRN app. You know, we've gotten so many emails where we've affected people's lives that, you know, we got one the other day, and I can't say who or anything, but (laughs) they were having a terrible day. They were just having an awful day and an awful week. Their week was crap. And they explained a couple of things that was going on in their week. And let me tell you, it was crap. Yeah. And they said that every day they listened to horses in the morning, it was their bright spot and it made them happy. Yeah. Wow. And that's why we do it, right? You know, there's a saying in podcasting, and you can address this one. Uh, there's a saying in podcasting that if you affect one person, you've done your job. You know, I was just going to bring up this message I got. Um <clears throat> 
just the other day from someone who shall remain nameless, but you're right. I feel like you and I are both kind of impacting each other and our own podcasting lives. And at the same time, we're both kind of going through a bit of a transition, um, which is what you're here explaining on stable scoop right now. And we'll get into a little bit more later, but, um, <clears throat> Yeah, the, the come to Jesus moment for me that I kind of <laughs> breezed past was that one of my shows is ending. And um, I got this message and, and it's from a listener and it said, um, I was losing my confidence and my feeling of self-worth. Your podcast is probably 80% responsible for keeping me going. And then um, he or she goes on to say, you've changed my life. Did you hear that? My life. And that that's... That's why we do it, you know, for we, we bring out this content in these shows, whether it's just to um, entertain people and give them laughs or if it's to inspire people or do both. You know, that's what we're always trying to do. So, yeah, it's incredible when we get good feedback, right? Yeah, and we, and we do get a lot of it. And, and that's why we do it. I mean, that's that's why we keep doing it. We also do it because I do it. I can't speak for all the other hosts. I also do it because I love who I work with. Mm. You know, I have support in Jennifer and Neil who and Ralph who do all of our editing. You now are fantastic, by the way. Yeah, who do I mean we don't ever have mistakes. Um you who just came on board and really has changed our life for the better. And I uh, heard is really fantastic. Yeah, she's just wonderful. <laughs> and then, and then you know, all the auditors and the hosts, we you know, and our sponsors, just everybody, but the hosts, I enjoy working with every one of them. Or I would or they wouldn't be here to be honest. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing it with them. And I hope they enjoy it too. I think they do. They make very little money. None of us make very much money. But we, we're not doing it for that. We're doing it because we enjoy doing it. I enjoy entertaining people, and I hope it is entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, but I also enjoy bringing a piece of knowledge to somebody. We had, a, we had an episode on horses getting cast in stalls, which means they roll over, their feet get stuck on the wall, and they can't get up. And that was uh, one of the trivia questions you gave me. Yes. And for, it's, uh, recently, yeah. We did a, a show on how to fix it. Well, a week later, one of our listeners said, thank God I listened to your show because my horse got cast in the stall and I knew exactly what to do and not to do. Mm. Because it's a very dangerous situation and people can get hurt. The horse can get Absolutely. hurt. You can get hurt. You're in there with a flailing horse with feet flying around. So, you know, that's what. So when we hear stories like that, too, that's what makes this all worthwhile. Totally. 100%. And also it's fun when we get, um, I get messages from people who are like, I'm inspired to start a podcast because of your show or that's kind of fun too. So, yep. so let's talk about the, speaking of starting podcasts and shows, let's talk about the future of the horse radio network. Well, what's, what's going on? One of the, calm those fears. Yeah. Glenn. One of those, calm those fears. I've been getting a lot of messages since I announced <laughs> that I'm doing a new show, which we're going to talk about next. Mm -hmm. That's not horsey. And I've been getting questions from people about the future of the Horse Radio Network, whether I'm going to stay doing horse shows. The answer is yes. It's not going anywhere. It's what pays the bills. Believe <laughs> I'm me, not the, stealing him. No, and believe <laughs> me, the new show is not paying any bills yet. It's costing us money. So we... The, the Horse Radio Network is bigger and better than ever. When, when I started years ago, I wanted to own the horse market and podcasting when it became a thing, when podcasting became a thing. When we started, it damn well was not a thing. <laughs> uh, nobody knew how to listen. It was clunky. It was hard to listen to our shows. It was just a mess when we started 10 years, don't, going on 10 years ago this year. So I knew it was going to take off someday. I prayed it was going to take off someday. I hoped it was going to take off someday. <laughs> and podcasting has taken off now. So... I always wanted the Horse Radio Network to be there, to be number one, so that everybody was out to catch us. And right. that's where we're at. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of all the hosts that have made that happen, and every the sponsors, everybody who's come together. You guys should be very proud, and Jimmy can attest to this. There is... There truly is nothing like the Horse Radio Network and independent podcasting. I cannot think of another network that has 35 sponsors, mm -hmm. that has the number of hosts that we do, that puts out the number of episodes we do with so few people. No, really. Glenn, you've hit numbers that other people <laughs> only dream <laughs> of and then sweat profusely at the thought of that, <laughs> having actually achieved that. Like you've achieved greatness in the world of podcasting. You really have. Well, and and I'm proud of that. You know, I'm proud yeah, of what you should we, be. I'm proud of what we have accomplished. And I, I, you know, I want the listeners to be proud of the Horse Radio Network too. We represent the horse world is represented in the podcasting world. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Independent podcasters world over know who the Horse Radio Network is. They Absolutely. know who we are. 
They may have never listened to one of the shows, but they know who we are and they know who you guys are. And I'm proud of the fact that we're able to bring the horses to the forefront of one of the fastest growing new media outlets there is. And it's actually a really nice marriage because, you know, it, it's the type of thing that people can listen to. You know, people can engage in pod, listening to podcasts while they're riding their horses, while they're cleaning their stalls. Listen to me. I'm talking like I know what horse people do, but <laughs> horse people do whatever it is that horse people do. <laughs> you know, podcasting is one of those things that they can enjoy just naturally in tandem with what else, wherever else they're doing. So it works out really well. It's a great marriage. And now I w- did get a question from one of our auditors that asks, Lorene asked, always wondered how you fit so much work into one day. You always seem to be doing a lot. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and half the time, a lot of what that involves is annoying me. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's because I send uh, Jemmy 50,000 things now to do a day. But, you know, before you were here, what, two months ago? Was it two months? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, about two months ago. Yeah, we just work a lot. Jennifer and I work a lot. It's from four in the morning, literally, to seven, eight at night. And we're starting to get help now to leave some of that so that we actually can play with our ponies and we can we can have a life again. And that leads to the next thing. So, I was going to say, you can't really talk about horses if you start to forget what they even look like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I got a question the other day. Somebody was out visiting one of our listeners and said, when do you have time to even play with your horse? And that was a good question. And it really made me think. And, it, you know, it, it, it makes the next thing we're going to talk about sound even crazier, to be honest. Yes. You're so true. <laughs> So right. When I start actually explaining when the words come out of my mouth, <laughs> what we're doing, it's really kind of insane. <laughs> so the Horse Radio Network is here to stay. We're growing. We have a bunch of new shows coming on. I have had more people contacting me that podcast is becoming popular about coming on the network than I ever have in the past. In the last four weeks, we have had more ad agencies and major companies come to us to ask about sponsorships than we've had in the last 10 years. I mean, yesterday more or the other morning, you said I have an, an ad sponsorship package to put together, and then by the afternoon, it was like I have three. <laughs> I had like, I, have I finished four like, that day, I and I have three more to do immediately today. It was crazy, and that's insane. all because podcasting is becoming popular, and companies are going. I guess we should do that, and they're figuring out that we're the ones to do it with. So, and because you guys clearly are successful, so congratulations to you for that. Thank you. Now, yeah, so, the future. Ahead. What's coming ah! next? Yeah, so a lot of people want to know, like, the rumor is that it's out there in the ether. You know, this is your first non-horse show. First show not about horses. Why now? Well, I've been doing, I've done 6,400 episodes about horses, uh, podcasts, and uh, I'm a horse husband at heart. So Mm -hmm. that means I love horses, but I also love other things, you know, (laughs) and uh, I... I'm at the point now where Jennifer said, I think it's time. Jennifer actually said, I think it's time that you pursue a show not about horses. You love doing other things. I think you need to keep your passion about podcasting going. Um, Because one of the things you have to be aware of when you're doing, no matter how much you love what you do, if you work 100 hours a week at it, it's your livelihood. And I spend half my time trying to sell ads and work with sponsors and in sales mode. You you have to be careful. It doesn't become a job, right? There's so much else that's involved that now you have you, now you have to do instead of want to do. And it only twenty five percent of my time spent on the microphone. The yeah. rest is spent doing business. You don't realize that yeah. there's a lot of other stuff that goes. It's on all the it. business side of running a business because yep. we're running a business like any other business. So that's what. I had to be, I, I'm constantly wary of that. This is the longest I've ever held a job, first of all, <laughs> in my life. <laughs> so, used to fire yourself. <laughs> yeah, my ADD kicks in and then I get bored and have to go, you know, do something else. But I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. I And Jennifer wanted, above all, to make sure that didn't happen. And she said, you need to look at doing another podcast. I'm a firm believer and I've spoken at many conferences and Jemmy's heard me. Mm-hmm. Uh, t- you know, when I've done keynote speeches and I always say the same thing. I always say your co-host will find you. Your right co-host, you'll know the minute you meet the right co-host. For And that happened with all of our shows with Wendy and Helena and uh, Jamie and just all of them, Reese and Philip and everybody. Everybody were showed up at the right time and I went, they would be perfect. I met Wendy doing a carriage ride where I got to drive my first four in hand and she was just helping out sitting in the back of the cart. We got talking <laughs> so much during the carriage ride, I forgot I was even driving the horses. 
I got in the car and Jennifer was along. She had done it for my birthday, my first four in hand driving experience of Hackney's of all things. And we got in the car. I said, she needs to co-host a driving show. And I called her the next day. So I am a firm believer that people find you. Well, yeah. Jemmy showed up in my life. Well, I'm sure I'm sure it also helped that I was standing there with a huge neon sign over my head with a big arrow that said, pick me, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you weren't at the time. You were one of my mentees, That's and true. I have two mentees at a time in the in the podcasting world, and I try and help them grow their shows or their networks and help them succeed doing this. It's my way of giving back. I don't charge them for that. It's just something I do. And you are my mentee, and everything I asked you to do to for your show and for your network, you did. Every single thing. And you did it well. And yeah. and then, you know, we got along very well. Well, we went to a conference here a couple months ago. And mm-hmm. we got to spend some actual time together, not just on the phone. And I said that she's the one. I knew right then that you were the one. But I've always wanted to do a travel show. I, that's what I've always wanted to do. I love traveling. I like getting out of the house. We work here all the time, so I like getting out of the house. Jennifer wants me out of the house like one weekend <laughs> a month now because she'd like to have some time to herself. We've been married 30 years working together. It's time. And I didn't know if you would go for doing a travel show. So that's when I approached you and said, hey, look, I have this crazy idea. I, well, actually, I, I, I was telling you about my idea for a Florida podcast, and it wasn't necessarily exactly about travel, but it was about exploring Florida somehow, and more of a business side, I think, of Florida. Yep. And then you started talking about your ideas and calling my ideas boring, and then <laughs> kind of eventually met in the middle, and yeah, it was it was. It was brilliant. Yeah, we kind of meshed the two ideas and put a really fun show together, I think. The first episodes are out now. People can go listen to it. Um, I think... I I also have said in my keynote speeches that I think local podcasts, and a show about Florida certainly is local, uh, local Mm -hmm. podcasts are going to be the thing of the future. I believe that. So I also believe that I needed to do one uh, to prove that. I think that it also can be profitable. I think we're going to see some sponsorships with this. You haven't uh, said the name of the show yet, Glenn. It's called Finding Florida. <laughs> Jemmy and I both live in Florida. We live a good ways away from each other. We're about three hours drive. You live yeah, in Southern half, Florida. Four, four and a half. She lives right near Wellington. Everybody's going to know where that is. It's <laughs> listening down in South Florida. I live in Ocala. So we're, we decided, though, that we're going to do this show. But we did, neither one of us wanted it to be a show where we're just interviewing people about places to go in Florida. That right. personally sounded boring to me. Yeah. Uh, and I think it did you too. It would have been really boring. Super duper, really boring. And there's a thousand shows different. like that already. Yeah. And, yeah. I've, and I've been doing an interview show for so long, my entire podcasting life. And I just wanted to do something. I wanted us to really think outside the box. And once we kind of gave each other permission to do that, I mean, the ball just started Well, let's rolling. be honest. Once J- Jennifer gave us permission to do that. <laughs> 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 True. Touche. Touche. <laughs> it started rolling and we have this new show. It is a travel show, but you, it's a show where we actually travel. Once a month, we travel on an adventure and we take you guys along. We record all throughout the day or days on our adventure. We interview people that we meet. It's very spontaneous and... Uh, it, it it actually turned out the first episodes that are now out now at FindingFloridaPodcast.com turned out better than I thought they would. They turned out way better than I thought. I mean, I thought it was going to be a good show, but we really managed to pack in so much good content, funny times, interesting people, good locations. I mean, you really feel like you're there when you're listening to it. I was listening back and with all the background ambient sounds and all of that and, you know, the people we met along the way. And, you know, that was what was so great about us actually going out and doing it instead of just calling people on Skype and being like, well, I want to talk to somebody from, you know, from Disney or I want to talk to somebody from Sarasota or from Tallahassee or from Jacksonville or from Miami. We don't just get someone on the phone like, no, we're and, and having them tell us what it's like over there. We're actually going and experiencing all these places and all these fun things and adventures ourselves and bringing the audience along with us and that's such a fun that's just one element of it and already it's it's so much fun we have two episodes that are going to be coming out a month uh we have an a and a b episode the Mm -hmm. a episode is is a a episode that kind of describes what the adventure is going to be and we're going to get you guys involved in that the auditors already have been they helped Mm -hmm. pick our first adventure the auditors uh chose we we did 10 free things to do in, in at disney world in one day 
using only Disney transportation, which made it a <laughs> wild, adventurous day. It was crazy. Uh, and, but it was the auditor's idea to do that. And we're going to get input from our listeners for, for almost every adventure we go on. We... It's out now. The A episode, though, is a little different. The first half of the episode kind of describes what we're going to be doing and where we're going to be going and, and that. The second is about all about some of the wacky things in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so we're going to be going on our adventures, as Glenn was saying, and sometimes it's going to be town-centric, like a specific city, a specific town. And sometimes it's going to be kind of more just area uh, devoted to a certain area. Like our next um, adventure is actually going to be along Route One and discovering things along Route One, this, which we'll tell you the details on in a second. But yeah, so that's that's what's going to be it. And so that's going to be the second half of of the episode package that you're going to get every month. And that first half is going to be just us, in, you know, interviewing someone from that place. So exactly everything I just made fun of, um, interviewing <laughs> someone from that place. But then a whole lot of other meat and, and potatoes in that episode too. So we're going to be um, giving you fun facts about Florida. So, so half the show is kind of going to be about that particular town we're going to be vi- we're going to be visiting next and then half of the first episode is going to be and let me tell you this is not normal yeah. stuff this is not boring we we've no. we, we've already been getting a lot of uh a lot of responses to these first episodes <laughs> uh and it's so funny because debbie said uh, snappy opening friendly chemistry lots of giggles interesting factoids and that's what she's talking about yeah uh, love them especially the little facts and funnies about florida so whether you live here or not you're gonna love this show it's i interesting think because florida's just it's one of those things that's just it's seen as an interesting place because it is it's really earned its, its reputation in all the ways that it has yeah. a reputation good and bad but yeah i mean i know so it's but it's cool to talk about all the different kinds of animals we have here all the strange interesting news stories we get here all the different history because there's so much history here the different cult it's it's gonna be such a good it already is such a good show i'm really excited about it Go listen, please subscribe anywhere you get podcasts, findingfloridapodcast.com. We would love for you to take a listen and let us know what you think. Uh, all of the horse people that have listened so far, even though it's not about horses, have had a fun time with it. Kyle said, you all seem to flow really well together. I really like the interviews with the random strangers you found. That's the best part. I like all the <laughs> laughter. makes it fun. And then Erica, who, who's a dear friend of ours, said, really love the partnership and chemistry you two have. Great fun vibe. This was a great sense of adventure. I really like liked the interaction with the guests and listeners. So it just, I, I, you know, we're getting rave reviews so far. Any place you find podcasts, it is going to be on the Horse Radio Network app here in a couple of days. So you'll find it showing up on the app there. You can listen there as well or on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen. Go to findingfloridapodcast.com. All the links are there on that page. And I just can't tell you how excited I am. It, I had so much fun doing this. Uh, we, we did manage to get a horse or two in there. So you'll hear that. You know, one more thing that uh, one more fee- piece of feedback that I don't think you've had a chance to see yet, Glenn. Today oh, wow. it came through um, on Facebook, and it said it was, uh, it's from your, one of your listeners. I think his name is Scary. Oh yes, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. He's so he a good wrote. Guy. Uh, he wrote. Well, you guys succeeded with your very first episode. I didn't know there was a live big band at the Grand. He's talking about the Grand Floridian, and uh, that they played there all the time, and that it was free to go and see them. Now I really want to go. And that's exactly that's the goal what we that want. we're trying. To, yeah, to have people disco- discover all these new adventures right in their own backyards or take staycations or vacations or come into Florida and explore it. It's, there's so much to do here. Ah, we're going to have a lot of fun, Glenn. I think we got the better half of the deal. We're going to have a lot of fun traveling yes. around. <laughs> we definitely are. We want you to be involved. So go to findingfloridapodcast.com mm-hmm. and you'll find that. I am not leaving the horse shows. I do stable scoop. I do hit them. I do driving. I'm going to continue doing stable scoop, hit them, and driving. So that's <laughs> I'm not leaving, okay? Everything's fine. I'm not stealing him. I promise. No, no. I Jennifer promise. wouldn't let her because that's what our, our shows pay the bills. <laughs> 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 Jimmy just costs us money. So, exactly. <laughs> so thank you for, for agreeing to be part of this. I really Are you kidding it. me? Thank you for asking me. It was an honor. Always. FindingFloridaPodcast.com. The new one, and of course, all the other old ones are on the app, iOS or Android. Just search for Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and it's easy to use. We're going to have a couple of new shows starting here in January, so we'll be up to 18 shows on the app here very shortly. Uh, Be sure to log in next time for another Stable Scoop episode. We really like having you here on the flagship show. Can't wait to get the new lineup started for you in 2018. I really, really think you're going to love it. And be sure to 
visit uh, visit all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at the website, horseradionetwork.com. I got a listener question that asked, um, how do you listen to past episodes that are beyond the app? Because iTunes only allows 50 past episodes. So you have to go to the website for that. And then you can listen to all the past, all 6,400 are there. So you can listen to them all at horseradionetwork.com. <laughs> Thank you, Jemmy. Are we done, Glenn? We're done. Happy scooping. You've been dying to say that, haven't you? I have! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Helena has messed that up for, for nine years. You got it right the first time. <laughs> what does she usually do? I don't know. She never remembers to do it, or she would oh. mess it up. It was just always messed up. And we used to put those in, so I'm going to leave this part in, too. Ha ha, Helena, she got it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> See you, everybody. Bye.